thousands of planes get their thrust from thousands of engines. But where did thousands of engines get their thrust? Since the dawn of aviation, man has been searching for ways to power the airplane. In 1903, the Wright brothers handcrafted the very first propellers for the Wright Flyer. They were thrilled to have achieved... Take a look at those ceramic blades once it winds down. Eh? I didn't really see that. There was quite a bit of fire out the back. Eh? Was it exciting? <laughs> quite a bit. <laughs> I think that's the way they normally start, though. If you see a Derwent start, there's six feet of flame. I'm, I'm still shaking. <laughs> section called electricity in the atmosphere. For every meter you go up in the air, 
the voltage increases by around 100 volts, or we could say around 100 volts per yard. We can draw these voltage increases using what are called equipotential lines. Notice that the ground is negative and the sky is positive with respect to each other. According to Feynman, this extends upward to 50 kilometers, or 31 miles, where the air is very conductive. This is the case in fair weather. In stormy weather, like a thunderstorm, things are quite different, and I won't talk about that here. And let's take a look at these. They're a bit loose. This is normal. This is the way they should be. So they're, there's no real resonance. They don't ring like a tuning fork, like some of the other rotor blades in other videos. Um, those, actually, we'll take a look at those right now. Here we are outside with our cutaway. This is the exact same thing we were just looking at. This is an LM1500. J79 rotor, and what's different about these blades? Just a quick one as always, um, been shopping again, a uh, massive saving, I got the book for six quid from one of those discount book stores. This one here is on the Airbus A380, uh, an absolute monster of it, look at that, I mean it's a beautiful thing isn't it. Now here you are, there's, there's the, uh, on the cone here, the cone, the vortex spiral, and there's a spiral there, on, on you know, giving you clues, you know. Uh, let's see here. Sorry, the sun's coming through the window here. But there, there's your, your spiral. And there's four, four of these engines strapped to these beasts. And here we are inside, showing you a bit a, a better idea of how the, the air is sucked in and, and then it's ignited when it's at the right temperature. So it, it, it's squeezed and then it's, it, it's squeezed in and then it's flipped out the other way. Um, not the best expression, but to Agent J's, that'll give you full details. Here we are, there's your cone, like a cone head, cone head and uh, your dunce's cap. Um, I mean, it's, it's, an abs it's an engineering marvel. That's, that's the only way to describe these, these aircraft and these air engines. Here you are, look, if you've never seen one, like I say, absolutely fantastic. Look at that. 
just just flipping through it here. So you, you, if you've never seen one, it, here you are. There's some more pictures for you. But this is that they have a small one at the back of the aircraft here, which directs pipes. So this one starts up a bit like the start car that Agent JZ shows you. So this one starts up so on its own uh, own merit, gets up to speed, and it delivers the um, air to spin these giant engines up via pipes and stuff inside the actual bit, um, the wings. I mean, they are enormous. These these things. They're you know. It's just sorry. I'm just. It's my usual production skill. So I'm just flicking through pages. You know, you you if you're into your aer aircraft, I'm sure you've 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 probably seen these flying past. You may have even have been lucky enough to go on one. Anyway, that's not what I'm here to do. You know where you know where I'm going to go with this, don't you? Sorry, I'm just flip back. Right, here's the wings um, being built, and when they're tested, I've shown you this before. They, 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 they have movement, I can't remember how many feet, it's six foot in each direction. There's a hell of a lot of play in these things. But when they test them, hydrostatic testing is when you put water or fluid inside something to make sure it's not going to leak. They don't do that with these uh, when they're testing the wings because they don't put liquid in the wings, basically. I've been saying this and I'll keep saying it. I mean, here's a, a Haynes bits and bobs. Um, I don't know whether it's going to... Let me see if I can find there. What's that say? Uh, 171, if we can find 171, it's over there, let's, what does that say, wing skin panel, blah, 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 wing tip tank, 167, so it's, it's saying you've got tank, oh, here's a better, here we go, this is a one, that's more like it, the fuel system, let's read what it says here, well accepted that an aircraft's fuel system has more profound effect on its performance than any other system, this one has 11 separate tanks, 21 pumps, 43 valves, one of the most advanced in the world, the size and scale of the A30. Da, 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 da. Here we go. Owing to the fact that it's fully loaded, there's some 118 tons of fuel being carried in each wing. And are you, are you reading that? Am I in the twilight zone? Here we go. Yeah. And the air can carry 320 litres of fuel, or about 250 metric tons. Now, a ton. What's a car? Two tons? On the wings. Inside the wings. Providing eight thousand miles of, of a journey. Oh, there you go. There's your, there's your, there you go. So that's the showing you these fuel tanks. So there was something else. If I could find it somewhere. Let's see here. Uh, there are seven transfer tanks. There's your seven. They have to get that lucky seven in, don't they? Each engine feed tank. Each feed tank has a collector cell holds up to one ton of fuel. But again, when you take off in an aircraft and they do the banking as they have to turn off, you never feel any of this sloshing about. When there's turbulence, you never feel it sloshing about. And when you come into land, it feels exactly the same as when it take it took off. And if there's any pilots out there, please, you know, let me know. And there, there's some more stats for you. Volume in litres, weight in kilograms. And it's, there you go, saying it's, it's points... Uh, 785 kilograms per litre and a li one litre being a one kilogram so it's, it's not far away you know when I've been comparing it to water oh sorry about that it's just my uh, usual skill set here so there you go total in look at that that's phenomenal isn't it the weight there <laughs> and there it's showing you um, that's how they, they refuel there two large ho hoses connect to it but look, let me look at this the A30 uses Jet A and Jet A fuel, so I'm not making this up. This is liquid fuel they're trying to tell you goes in these wings. Complete refuel can take 45 minutes with a pressure of some 45 psi. It's just a, it's just nonsense. There's not a chance on this earth of putting liquid fuel in. The, in you know, we know this by now. We've, I've done enough videos, uh, you know, and there. Look at them. It's a bit an engineering masterpiece. And to bear in mind, underneath you've got all of the landing gear, and as I say, all the hydraulic flaps and the hydraulics are all inside here, and there's all the electrics. There's all the the um, there's that there's that back one with the starter car, and then there's all the pipes that have to go to feed all of these um, beautiful engines. Anyway, that's just a quick one. Um, as I say, you can, you can I'm trying to name it. Is it the works or something? One of these these closing down bookstalls. But you know, I just pick them up. I buy them, I'll stick them on my shelf, and hopefully one day we'll look back and we'll all be laughing at this. Well, I hope we'll all be laughing at it. Laughing at the complete and utter bullshit lie of the liquid fuel going into aircraft. 
and how the rich have been siphoning off our money via these aircraft for 72 years plus or, or more than that. And it's obviously not just aircraft. But this is just a video on, the, on that particular one. Anyway, I hope you like that one. Thanks a lot. That'll do, Tao.
We more than likely have a secret bedroom and board on the plane. Fatigue is a hard thing to work with, and cabin crew often work 16-hour days, so it's vitally important that they get a bit of shut-eye. There's usually a hidden staircase leading to the bedroom, which has 6 to 10 beds, a bathroom, and in-flight entertainment. Singapore Airlines have special corpse cupboards where they store the bodies. These can also be used when transporting a body to another city or country for burial. All right, here's a little video about the crew rest area in the brand new 787 Dreamliner. Brand new aircraft just entered service from Boeing, and it's actually very nice. Uh, this is my first flight on it. I'm deadheading to catch another flight. And uh, as a crew member, I'm just spending my time up in the rest area uh, on my way out. So I thought some people might be interested in seeing. Uh, basically, the top of the rest area, which is what I'm showing you right now, is the two bunk beds. Bunk bed one and bunk bed two. That one's got a lot of sheets and pillows that I threw over in it. But anyway, everything you need uh, between the bunks, there's a wall, a solid wall with storage area and a mirror, and then a curtain here, which comes across the track and completely encloses you inside of uh, your bed. And inside each bed area, there's a phone, um, gas per fan, lighting system, reading lights, area lights that are fully adjustable. Um, on that back wall, that dark spot is a power. Power outlet, USB outlet, like I said, little storage area for some things, mirror, um, drink holders. grandparents which gave me a bit of a breakthrough so you might think I'm joking about this but this is the breakthrough I came across now it's what you would probably know as a balloon copter it's a very simple device it's essentially a balloon it's essentially a balloon that holds air um, and the contraction of the balloon compresses the air uh, feeds it into this housing here which splits it off into three straws running along the leading edge of the propeller directs the air at a tangential direction to the uh, to the rotation of the propeller which spins it and creates lift flight it's evolving how let's start with entirely new wings wings that go beyond conventional thinking and span using composites to achieve unconstrained length curves and the highest efficiency wings with a simple fold that ensures they always fit everywhere they go that's why the Boeing 777 X is the evolution of flight it's airline prosperity embodied in wings in blades in comfort in space in stars It's the future of flight unfolding.
holding, turning, and pressing. Without compressed air, there's no holding or moving. This form of energy is a must for industrial production. The problem is, 97% of the energy used to produce compressed air is lost as waste heat. That's why Team Technic, a company that makes machines for the automotive, medical, and solar energy sectors, uses a special device to produce this form of energy. A compressor draws in fresh air. Here, an electric-powered auger compacts the medium. The compression creates heat. But unlike normal compressors, this one doesn't let the heat go to waste. The heated air flows into a heat exchanger, providing warmth to the company's heating system. The compressed air is then conducted into a steel container, where it's available for production according to need. This air compressor uses about 70% of the electrical energy input compared to only about 3% for compressors that use no waste heat. The southern German company uses compressed air to power tools such as pneumatic screwdrivers and grinding pencils, among others. Only with the help of compressed air do these instruments reach the necessary torque. Because of this and other uses, the fluid energy form is distributed through extensive pipelines in many companies. The problem is loss due to leakage. Team Technic uses a special ultrasound microphone to track down leaks. Team Technic not only uses the fleeting form of energy for machine production, the company also uses compressed air to power its own machines. The fuel system, let's read what it says here. Well accepted that an aircraft's fuel system has more profound effect on its performance than any other system. This one has 11 separate tanks, 21 pumps, 43 valves, one of the most advanced in the world. The size and scale of the A30 is da, 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 da. Here we go. Owing to the fact that it's fully loaded, there is some 118 tonnes of fuel being carried in each wing. And are, are you reading that? Am I in the twilight zone? Here we go. Yeah? And the air can carry 320 litres of fuel or about 250 metric tons. 250 metric tons. 250 metric tons. 250 metric tons. Uh. 